The Mike North Advantage is brought to you by the Vidoliak Law Group, fighting insurance companies since 1963, and BetChicago.com, your home for sports coverage with a Chicago betting and fantasy focus. This is the Bears Barroom Radio Network. The following program is recorded live and intended for all audiences. This is the National Football League. You got a bunch of owners who inherit the teams who are members of the Lucky Sperm Club uh, who are trying to negotiate and in 2018 high tech type of agents. And I, I just think Ted Phillips and Ryan Pace are overmatched. And I think it's bad for the whole football team. And it's a cloud that hangs over the head of the Bears and Matt Nagy and what they want to do. How many times you heard this? I'm going to Vegas. I go, how'd you do? Well, if I lost four grand, but you know, you go there to have fun. No, you go there to win. And that's what's wrong with people. They have the negative mentality in anything they do, including sports, before they even laid the bet down. So you got to be positive. The people that really scare me, the people that can walk in those electric carts, and they go to the slot machine and sit on them. And then they forget that they're supposed to be, you know, crippled from the waist down. Have a bear standing with a towel in his hands, rubbing his crotch. Bear ball washing. What you got to really try to do is money manage and only bet one or two games on a Sunday. That's what we'll be doing on Bear Bar. You're listening to the Mike North Advantage, and it begins right now. That's right, the Mike North Advantage begins right now, and I am fired up. I am Mike's wingman, Aldo Gandia, and I am fired up like I am every Friday at 9 a.m. Central, right here on MixLR.com, where we come to you live. Can't catch us live? Then catch us on the podcast stream. Just go over to BearsBarroom.com, Spotify, iTunes, all these places. We are there for you, and you need to listen, because as I told my good buddy Tom Bowman, who I had not seen in years. I told him yesterday, listen to the Mike North Advantage because I know you like to lay a jelly bean or two every Sunday. And Mike is 21, 5, and 2 since the NFL season began. He is the hottest NFL handicapper, and we have him here at the Bears Bar Room. Mike, how are you, my good friend? It's lonely at the top. What can I tell you? You know, I'm, out, I'm the guy that put the flag on the moon. I'm the guy that's at the top or the tip of Mount Everest. You know what I'm saying, Aldo? I'm the guy uh, that, that flew the spruce goose. I'm Howard Hughes, damn it. I'm getting it done. How are you doing? I am well and uh, happy to... Be here with you. I know I hate to start things off uh, with a little bit of a sour note, but I know you were at a a funeral yesterday for somebody mm-hmm. that all Chicago sports fans know very, very, very well. Dan Pompey, a Hall of Fame NFL sports writer. Uh, you were there. Is there anything that you can share about that for, for us? Because we, we are just heartbroken about what's happened. Uh, well, I will say this. I mean, first of all, the daughter... Her name was Anna, and uh, BB and I uh, lived down the street from the Pompeys in Park Ridge, and uh, for tw- for years. And me and B were in Park Ridge for 22 years until we moved recently. And we used to decorate our house for Halloween. We did that for 22 years, and we'd get 800 kids. I mean, on Halloween, seven to 800 kids. We'd have all the bags prepared. You know, we'd have our house decorated completely on the outside. It was lit up like a Christmas type of situation, only it was Halloween. We'd have ghosts, you know, we'd have, uh, you know, all sorts of different things. Then you'd come inside, and we had a Halloween village, you know, wow. which was cool. And Anna used to come in from the time she was a little girl, and uh, I used to call Anna little BB, because she looked a lot. If you look at her picture on my Twitter feed at North to North, Mm -hmm. she got the same type of features as my wife does, basically, or that the mother, Colette, doesn't. It's something. I went to the wake last night, and uh, Dan Pompey and I have always had, not a friendship, but a a, a strong acquaintance. Mm -hmm. But we were... At times on the air, when we came out, when he came on the air, and he came on frequently, because I do respect Dan and I respect his work. But sometimes we'd have some laughs, sometimes we'd have some some debates, mm-hmm. and then sometimes there'd be some contentiousness. Mm-hmm. And I always felt bad, Eldo, mm-hmm. because Dan is a good guy. Mm-hmm. Dan is a gifted writer. Yes. But when it got on the Bears, sometimes I 
think certain things, and, you know, there'd be the disagreements. Right. Uh, and it was the score back in the day vintage, you know, mm-hmm. um, where the fan-like guy was debating with, the, with, with one of the more, most respected scribes in the NFL. But I, I, was, I remember Dan from the beginning. Uh, but then I got to, you know, B.B. and I got to know the family, the two boys, and we'd see them at Halloween, too. And it was just so terrible. No, no matter what kind of relationship you have with people, and I had a pretty good one with Dan, um, it, 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 it just brings everything home to what's really important. And uh, her death was sudden. And I just wanted just on behalf of Bear Bar Room, and I saw everybody tweet it out and stuff because we all at the Bears Bar Room have a lot of respect for Dan and Colette and everybody there. So we'd like uh, to give them all due respect and God bless from uh, the folks at uh, Bears Bar Room uh, to the family. Yes, indeed. More and more people congregating in our Bears chat room here, and uh, we're hearing all sorts of. Uh, Condolences to the Pompey mm-hmm. family. So our heart goes mm-hmm. out to Dan Pompey and his entire family. All right, let's talk a little sports here. The Texans okay. forty-two, the Finns twenty-three. <laughs> My goodness, how did the Chicago Bears lose to Brock Osweiler, who had no touchdown passes yesterday, one interception? And I gotta tell you, this Deshaun Watson. Every once in a while, I think, well, ah, he's not that good. And then he turns around and has a five touchdown game, and just looked really remarkable. What are your thoughts on that game? Well, you know what my thoughts are first about Deshaun Watson. I've been vocal in my uh, opposition to the trade to move up on Mitch Trubisky. Mm -hmm. But Mitch Trubisky's coming along fine, thank you. But in this day and age, once again, I brought this up last week. When you have quarterbacks that are this young throwing five touchdown passes, oh, wait, but he isn't this young. Deshaun Watson is a champion. He beat Alabama. He had 40-plus career college games. Mm -hmm where Trubisky only had 13. Right. And that was my argument from the beginning to move up, regardless of anything else. To get a guy like Mitch Trubisky, who's learning how to play the quarterback position, and he's doing well at it, thank you. He's progressing, I think, every week. But there's some, there's some deficiencies that have to be addressed. But the other guys, Mahomes, well, not Mahomes, Watson were, to me. Yeah because I'm not going to jump on the Mahomes bandwagon, because I want to watch it. I'll stay where I was at from the very beginning. How you could move up when you had those other guys there to pick Trubisky will always be a mystery to me, and I think the history books may write about it. They've won five games in a row now. They got merciless back on defense. Clowney is finally, you know, he's got a pulse, playing well. (laughs) You have a a J.J. Watt. You've got a great defense. Bill O'Brien has won five straight. And they got a leader at the quarterback position. So, to me, this is a team uh, that I think, and think about this, folks. Bill O'Brien took over a 2-14 and 14 team. Mm-hmm. Okay? And then with, an air, uh, with a quarterback like Matt Schaub, not saying he did, he had to rebuild that football team. He, said he had a couple 9-7 years. But you know what? He's on his way to the playoffs now if these guys stay healthy. Injuries have derailed that football team from the quarterback position and J.J. Watt. Yep, I totally agree. Winter is coming for the New England Patriots. They're no longer, I mean, not no longer, but their their reign at the AFC uh, conference is going to last who knows how much longer, and it could be the Texans that could be the new uh, king of the North. You hate, you hate New England so much. I, I do. just see it. I do. I see, you know what? You got your face painted. Any, you know, you got a little thing under your forehead. Anybody but New England. There's no doubt about it, Elbo. I know this. You know this. Yeah. Oh, the whole country knows it, you know. <laughs> they know this. And, and it, they listen to the show. And what show is this? It seems like it's been 100. What show is this? This is number 11 that we've done together. Can you believe it? Well, does that count the pre? Does that count the 10 minutes? I. I talked to you for 10 minutes before the show. I'm exhausted. <laughs> I know. My God. We I thought, start. I thought, you know what? You got me, only got me missed twice. <laughs> Things are going well. Things are going well. And By uh, the way, can I break in on something? Sure. Because you're yakking. You're always yakking. I, I know. I, I talk I way too much on the show. <laughs> anyway, can, can I? The Verdoliac Law Group, you know about them, don't you? Oh, my gosh. Yes. They're the best. The Chicago and Nashville Law Firm that has been fighting insurance companies since 19. 
63. The Verdoliac Law Group offers reduced free fees for those in uniform, military, veterans, police, and fire. Now, listen, you've been injured. You've got to call 844-4-VLG-LAW or visit them at Verdoliac.com to get the money you deserve. That's 844-4-VLG. I didn't mean to interrupt, but I just wanted to get that out. You know what I'm Well, I'm glad you did, and I, I encourage everybody to go out, go to their law, uh, their website because they've got these testimonials there with people who have been uh, yep. uh, represented by Verdoliac Law Group, and, and that's that's the best advertisement ever. When you get real people talking about what this uh, law group did for them, take a look at those testimonials, and you'll be convinced that if you have any and legal needs. I tweet needs, something out. When they tweet something out, I'm always on top of it like I am with all the Paris Barroom stuff. All our advertisers, uh, whether it's Tick Splits, who, by the way, I mean, I read up about Tick Splits. I don't know. Genius move, Aldo, getting that uh, 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 advertiser to come in. I mean, when you look at, believe me, I know the ticket business, the ticket buying business, and I've known people that have been in it. I was, I was promoting uh, ticket services back in the, the early 90s. Believe me when I tell you this. Just tech. Just check out Tick Splits, okay? Tick and then you got that Chicago, which we're going to talk more about later on because they've had some outstanding stuff. It's an embarrassment of riches at Bears Bar Room <laughs> and the Mike North Advantage. Yeah, and kudos to Bears Girl for uh, partnering with uh, Tick Splits on behalf of Bears Bar Room. Great job, Bears Girl. All yeah, right. Bears Girl. Speaking of Bears Girl, um, <laughs> let's talk about Chicago Bears. Wonderful young woman. Walk quite fond of her. <laughs> From the Big Lebowski. <laughs> that, that, that is correct. Do you like that movie, by the way? Because I've seen it once and I thought it was horrible. I think it's one of the best movies. I, every time it's on, it's Destination, Destination TV. There are some scenes that if you don't watch it from beginning, then we'll throw you off. I just like the acting in it. I think John Goodman uh, does one of the top acting jobs of all time, and Jeff Bridges created a cult thing. So whether you like the movie or not, I mean, I hate that Rocky Mountain Horror Show. What is it? The Rocky Cloudy Horror Show. <laughs> Rocky I've horror never show. even seen it. But I respect the fact that there's people that wait in line at 2 in the morning with gunfire coming at him just to see it. <laughs> Absolutely. Rocky Mountain Horror. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. I'm going to give The Big Lebowski another shot because I love the Coen brothers. They're excellent filmmakers. I'm definitely going to give that movie another shot. But it's about the acting of Goodman. You got Julianne Moore. I mean, so you've got Jeff Bridges, really with the role of a lifetime. Um, it's, it's a comedy, uh, it, it, and it's hilarious. But Goodman, to me, uh, in that movie, was, that's one of his top three roles of all time. Yeah, we've got all sorts of references to the Big Lebowski in the chat room. I don't know what they're talking about. The uh, M. Reardon really says, don't "Because you don't give anything a chance. That's the way you are." <laughs> I'm a tough nut. <laughs> <laughs> tough Spe grader. <laughs> tough grader. Speaking of tough grading, the Chicago Bears' rushing attack has been uh, pretty tough uh, in terms of the stats and so forth. Particularly Jordan Howard. A lot of criticism being mounted uh, to the Chicago Bears' coaching staff for how they're using Jordan Howard, Tariq Cohen's numbers are okay, but uh, nonetheless, this rushing attack is not probably playing at, the, at anywhere near where they should be. This is what Mark Helfridge said when he was asked about the rushing attack and how to uh, uh, get it going. Still finding ourselves a little bit in terms of, um, hey, the, you know, these guys are better at whatever man schemes. Th this group is better at, at zone schemes. Um, we've obviously had kind of some, some uh, in and out with, with Cush and, and James and finding the right combination there, uh, getting our backs to, to recognize things better, differently, getting Mitch to rec recognize a few things, our tight ends. Uh, so so again, that, that, that's the problem, I think, with being close to a lot of things across the board. It's not one thing. If it was one thing, we'd all go take this guy out, put this guy in, problem solved. Uh, but that's that's a little bit, uh, you know, again, across the board <laughs> offensively is, is it's been a little <laughs> bit here and there. <laughs> you want to take the show to a, a, just a complete off with a train? For the train to just hit the side of the mountain, for God's sake. I got to listen to that guy. I knew Let you me were tell you a little that. story. Can I tell you a story? Please. Yeah, put a log on the fire here. <laughs> okay. Here's what I'm going to say to all the Jordan Howard or Tariq Cohen fans. Okay. I love them both, and we're going to need them before the year's out. But let's quit worrying about rushing titles or average yard rushing. It's a change game. Mm. That's just the way it is. I don't like it. But when you have passing rules like they do now, mm -hmm. where you have 
quarterbacks that are back in the day mm-hmm. that throw five, six touchdown passes, whether it's Mahomes, Trubisky, Watson, that young, okay? Mm-hmm. You can't imagine what guys like Fauci Marino or anybody else would have done with these rules, but here's what I'm going to tell you. You're insane to run the football. Get the lead and then run it, maybe. Here's what I don't like. When you're geared in so much that you're the Philadelphia Eagles, and I benefited from the stupidity of their head coach, and I don't care if you won a Super Bowl last year, to run the ball one time when you have the lead against Carolina in the fourth quarter and throw 13 is just plain stupid football. I don't care what the analytics say or anything else. I will say this. You need the running game to win certain games and to win in the playoffs. Mm Mm-hmm. You need the passing game to get to the playoffs. And let me ask everybody this while they're boo-hooing the running game. Because believe me, folks, if the Chicago Bears ever got serious about getting a historian, they'd just hire me and throw the money at me. Because <laughs> I was at these games. Yeah, you were. i seen the Peyton years. i seen the Sayers years. Mm-hmm. I love them all. Mm-hmm. But what did we win? And when I read that Mitch Trubisky... This is good stuff, Eldo. Do you say you pinch yourself sometimes? I, I mean, do. seriously, when, when Bears Bar Room gets this much information. I get chills. I mean, it means I'm working on the show. You know what I mean. <laughs> you know I don't mail it in, right? That's absolutely right. All right, let me ask you something. <laughs> Trubisky has a chance to throw for 4,000 yards wow. and 30 touchdowns. Ooh. That would be the first time a Chicago Bear quarterback's ever done that. And where's the running game gotten us? Now, let me read something to you. You know how many times Peyton Manning did it? 14. You know how many times Drew Brees did it? Nine. Hmm. Talking about 4,000 yards. Wow. You know how many times Tom Brady did it? Seven. Brett Favre, six. Marino, six. Rivers, six. Rodgers, five. Eli Manning, four. Warren Moon, four. These are 4,000-yard seasons. I'll go down to one. How's this? We'll go down to one because Trubisky's got a chance to do this. For 4,000 yards. I didn't even put the touchdowns in. He's on pace to get 30 touchdowns. I don't know how many quarterbacks have thrown 4,000 yards and 30 touchdowns. Not, you know, it's pretty good. Yeah. Burline, Grinnell, Mm. Mark Bolger, Terry Collins, Dante Culpepper, I mean, Andy Dalton, Hmm. Lynn Dickey, John Elway, Cutler did it with the Broncos, that rat. Um, (laughs) Jim Everett. I. I could go on and on and on. Unbelievable. So the fact that the Bears have a shot at it, mm-hmm. hey, as long as they win the games. That's right. That's all that matters. But I'll tell you what, it's embarrassing that they've never had a, a, a guy like that, 4,000 yards and 30 TDs. Yeah, you know, uh, the identity of the Chicago Bears has always been defense and the run game. And so it... it, 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 it sort but- of like me and you at the library. Let's get out of here. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> but it, it seems like the Chicago Bears have almost abandoned the run game in this new stage of passing the ball. And I know I get the whole, you know, the, the short passing game now is the extension of the run game. Well, at least throw the ball more to Jordan Howard because his, the, the targets, the pass targeted his way have reduced too. He had nine after two games, and since then, he's, he, I don't think he's got nine total. So but get listen, the ball in his the hands. The more we lose, the more we lose, the stronger case everybody can make. There's no question about that. But here's what mm-hmm. I would equate it to. Mm-hmm. I would equate the crying about the run game to crying about we're not taking more twos than threes in the NBA. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, sure. I mean, sure. I mean, you need the three-point play now. Yes, And absolutely. if you're going to just have your team dominate or try to dominate play in the NBA with the two-point play, mm-hmm. you're going to get destroyed. Yes. So, um, Great analogy. I think, but you know what? I think times have changed. And I think people got to wake up. Even I, I knew, I knew, listen, they're personal friends of mine. I know the two greatest running backs who ever played the game, in my opinion. So uh, they would even acknowledge it, uh, that, that it's a different time. And I don't know how long. And running backs don't have a lot of longevity. And just the way the rules have changed, you're nuts if you don't pass. 
Yeah, it's a good point. Although, you know, the way they're using running backs now, I think that whole longevity thing is going to go away. These guys are going to play into their mid to late 30s. Look at Frank Gore. Well, how old is he? He's in his, in his late 30s, and it's just because they're not being used as much as they did when – I mean, poor Walter Payton. You, you and I saw it. After the game, they'd be interviewing him, and he'd look at the cameraman and say, man, I, 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 they got to maybe consider passing the ball a little more. Here's the guy that – yeah, but here's the guy that didn't even want to retire. The yeah, Bears retired. Very, very true. I mean, I'm sorry. He's yep. still a, They couldn't wait to get Neil Anderson in. Yeah. I, you know Silly. what? I could have waited for him. Yes. All right? Absolutely. Um, not to anything against Neil, one of the better Red Bear running backs in, in recent vintage. Absolutely. But I could have waited for him. Mm-hmm. They, couldn't, they couldn't wait to retire Gary Fensick. Mm-hmm. He had two more years. Yeah. I know football. If I would have been the Bears GM the last 20 years, I'm sorry, folks. We got two, three Super Bowls. Mm. I'm sorry. I, I wouldn't have signed Cutler. I mean, I w- there's a lot of things that I've been proven right on. I mean, I see an article today about Dave Wanstead in the paper, okay? Mm-hmm. How witty and stuff and, 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 and bright he is on TV now, okay? Mm-hmm. I was there. I was there when he coached the team. And when you think about expectations, that's an expectation of colossal failure. And, uh, you know, I see a two-page article on him in Jeff Aquist's uh, column in Sports Media, and I respect Jeff and everything that he wrote here. But here's what Watson had to say. Would you like to hear this? Sure. It's what I bring to the table, Aldo. You know what I mean? You, you didn't prepared. get a 52 bomber. You didn't get, you got a Mick. You know what I mean? <laughs> or whatever the heck it is now, an F-35 or whatever we're ordering, okay? Okay. Once I was done coaching, oh, didn't mean to make you feel uncomfortable by talking about the military. Um, <laughs> once I was done coaching and started exploring the media, I came to the conclusion, I'm really not worried about coaching anymore. Well, how many, pro- how many programs like, could, or, or teams could you run? Okay? <laughs> then he says, I'm not worried about saying something. I want to have fun with it and let my real personality come out. Once I made that decision, it really has been pretty easy. Well, you got a good agent, Brian, Brian Harlan, who was your guy when, you, when he was with the Bears. And I give Brian credit for giving you a career because he is good on TV. He's a poor man's Ditka, though. That's the, he's exactly like Ditka, mm-hmm. only Ditka didn't coach at Pitt and screw their program up. What I'm trying to say is when he says this, Eldo, and this is why he and I always had a problem, and we went back and forth. He goes, I want to have fun and let my real personality come out. Yeah, he was a political coach, right? a, a management lackey mm-hmm. who never opened up and spoke his piece. He was a mouthpiece for the McCaskey organization, and he was indebted to him for giving him a job. Period. End of story. Very, he just very, admits it here, he was never himself. very, very well put. Right or wrong, when you hire an NFL head coach or anyone in a leadership position, you need to let them do it his or her way and get well, out of okay, the way. And on top of that, Elf, on top of that, I didn't mean to interrupt you there, but, right. but Ditka, that's why people love him. Mm-hmm. Because he told it like it was, whether you agreed with them or not. Mm-hmm. Whether you agreed with them or not, and he was entertaining. Everything wants that wasn't. He had a mustache like Ditka. He had his hair combed like Ditka. But you know what? I found. I, I, I mean, seriously, when you stop and think about it, he was a McCaskey guy. Yeah. They both appeared in trench coats on the front page of the Chicago Sun Times. It's just an absolute sham. Mm. When I hear him finally say, "I should have been myself." Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, <laughs> that's a, that's, and I smelled them from day one. Yeah, I am so glad that you found that because that, that just resonates with me so much. These guys have just got to be allowed to be themselves and, or they have to have the guts to say, hey, I, it's going to be my way or just fire me. I'll go back to you know being the defensive coordinator at Nobody blah, blah, blah. He would do a, a player would be good, do mm-hmm. a good job. I remember James Allen had a real good game. No, hey, you know what? We'd be on the air saying James Allen was great in, in this game, and he's had two or three great games in a row. And then he'd come on the air and go, well, let's not put him in the Hall of Fame yet. He's a management bobo. That's what he was. Because you know what? They told him, hey, they're building this guy up. Mm-hmm. I mean, come on. How, how can you say that about a guy? Just say, hey, he had a great game. He never knew how to 
this was a guy that, that thought he played in the NFL. It's a joke. Mm. What did you think about what Matt Nagy said uh, this week when he was asked about You think the I went too far a little bit? No. Not, okay, never. Thanks. Never. Wait a I just had a ting. I had a ting in my chest. I leaned back in the chair. Next. <laughs> Please don't scare us that way. No, I don't. Not till the end of the show. That's my motto. <laughs> there you go. The show must go on, even though you That's got right. chest pain. I got a casket on retainer. <laughs> what did you think about what Matt Nagy said when he was asked about Vic Fangio? And he said, you know, I don't want to overstep my bounds. He's a head coach, for crying out loud. Unbelievable. <laughs> that was Unbelievable. Cool. You know what? I'm telling you, he's 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 got his own issues, and and and, and the, the reason he says I don't want to overstep my bounds, that's because he doesn't want to disrespect the guy and his staff. And I get that. Mm -hmm. But if if he sees something wrong, I would pray to the Lord on high, mm -hmm. since he was an offensive coach and he knows how to beat defenses. And boy, his have been beaten lately. Uh, that he talked to Vic Fangio mm -hmm. about it. Well, I, I would hope to God. But I, uh, the answer's not a good answer. No, not That's at all. That's all I'll say. Say, you know, we discuss things in meetings every day. You've got to be able to think on your feet. Right. And say, we discuss stuff every day. We, just, we discuss all three phases of the game. Mm -hmm. So to, to basically uh, just give that answer, it shows you he's a young coach. Uh, PR is so important. We just talked about wants that, uh, not being himself. It's good to see that after all these years and after just a, a fruitless coaching career, he's going to be be himself. That's awesome. I'm happy for him. Before the, uh, you know, you know what? I I really am. But but that's what you need. And we just talked about that. And that's what Nagy's got to do: be himself. And I think he'll be okay. Well, and Vic Fangio was asked uh, yesterday on Thursday about the explosive plays his defense is giving up in the fourth quarter, and this was his response gone from being a pretty good tackling team to the last two weeks that hadn't been the case and that that's one of the main reasons with the limitations you have in practice during the week how do you go about trying to solve that tackling issue just emphasize it through video through drills and practice and getting the right mindset to tackle Mike North, gone are the days where you could tell a football team, get the hell back out onto that football field. We're going to stay here until we get this tackling thing right. Now everything is uh, restricted by the collective bargaining agreement and so forth. I'm worried about this tackling. Two straight games with poor tackling. If this continues, then forget, say goodbye to the playoffs. Well, yeah. I mean, you know what? The playoffs are not guaranteed to anybody. Uh, they started out good. Uh, we need Khalil Mack to perform. Uh, I don't want to hear about his injuries. He's in uniform. He's paid. Nobody says you're going to be 100% every time you play. He sat out. You know, we got on the offensive side of the football, Allen Robinson, who doesn't practice hardly anymore, who's turned into a possession receiver, and he has leg problems. I mean, that's a mysterious – I said it at the beginning, it's a mysterious signing, but I still like the kid – Hopefully, I'm not giving up on it, believe me, because, uh, you know, other receivers have off days and stuff like that, uh, and he's had a pretty, he's got 25 catches. That being said, when you have missed tackles like they've been having, it's because of lack of practice. Like I've said, a heavyweight championship fighter, regardless of what fight, or, fight he's going to fight, has to spar, and when he doesn't spar a lot or gets lazy, and this could be true in any part of the fight game, any weight class, you're going to get killed. You're going to get killed. Jake LaMotta beat Sugar Ray Robinson one time, but they fought six times. Mm -hmm. Okay? If Jake LaMotta wasn't completely married to his craft and insane on top of it, he would have <laughs> never had a chance against Robinson, yet he took out Robinson to the limit a couple times, and he won once. Mm -hmm. um, Robinson was a better fighter. But if Jake LaMotta, if you saw the movie, would have decided to go into the ring, which he couldn't, Looking the way he did when he was in the phone booth, he lasts 10 seconds. So you got to be in shape. They wear down. Tackling is attitude, and you can't be lazy. You can't. And you got to take your techniques. And they aren't doing that right now. And Fangio, I'm sorry. I lived through the Buddy Ryan era. I, I, if I never hear the guy's name again, it would, I'd be happy. They got this guy <laughs> raised to a, a pulpit that I just leave for certain coaches in, in the Chicago Bear history, and he's not one of them. Yeah. You know, it, it, well, it's a total, total you difference. You think I was too honest on that? No, I, I love honesty. Okay. Honesty okay. is what drives uh, this. Uh, 
Oh, never mind. Billy Joel, <laughs> greatest concert I ever saw. Really? That's the greatest one, Billy Joel? Yeah. Ooh. What's the greatest one you ever saw? Um, I would say it was Earth, Wind, and Fire. Really? <laughs> I knew I was going to shock you with that Let's one. move on. <laughs> I need, I, I need people blaring horns at me for two hours. Okay. Even though I love Chicago. I love all my friends oh in my Chicago. Oh, my gosh. My God. They get the theme song for Monsters in the Morning. I love them. <laughs> I got a funny quick, quick story. I'm talking to John Buffon and Bears Girl prior to one of their shows, and I, I make a reference to Blood They're Sweat. They're doing a good job. They are. They're a great job. And I make a reference to Blood, Sweat, and Tears and Heidi Ho, the old song from the 1970s. <laughs> they didn't even know what the hell I was talking about. <laughs> Can I tell you something? I wasn't the biggest fan. And when I heard Heidi Ho, uh -huh. I was just looking for traffic. Seriously. <laughs> Jeez. I really was. I thought they were great. He's talking about Lemon horns. Rare Earth. And Motown signed Rare Earth. Yeah, Very that's right. He had to be slipping at that point. <laughs> he, was, he was trying to find any any next big act. Anybody. <laughs> yes. All right. Hey, Mike, tell us who your picks, uh, your NFL picks are sponsored by, and then I will roll the music. Well, let me tell you something. Bet Chicago's always running free contests, but this week they're offering a special one tied to the Bears game at Miami. Now, if you go a perfect six for six, you'll win a share of ten grand. Now, think of the contest as a six-leg parlay on steroids. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So, who covers the spread, total points scored, first Chicago. I tweeted out, first Chicago player to score a TD, all this stuff. I mean, if you pick Troy, Trey Burton, you know, for a lot of catches, you're kicking butt, who's been a real good player. Uh, Trubisky's done well, um, you know, as far as putting yards up and stuff like that, which, and touchdowns, we were just talking about that. So check it out. They got great apps and everything else. Yeah. Bet Chicago app or visit BetChicago.com. Click on contest. Try your luck. That's BetChicago.com. Now, you know what? Because of uh, usually I give out uh, – my record and everything at the beginning, but because of Dan Pompey and the situation, we had to get that out of the way so we could move on with our other situation. So can I just brag for a minute? Oh, go for it, please. I love this. Is that okay with you? You want to start the music early, or do you want me to just uh, uh, start once uh, once I pick the first team? No, no, this is no. What we call production on the air. <laughs> exactly. We're having our pre-production meeting during the production. <laughs> no, that's the best radio. That's the best radio you could do. Absolutely. So you'll wait for the music. No, look, my, I got. The the music going on softly behind you. Oh, I heard it. I, I just heard it now. There it is. Ooh, I love this stuff. Oh, my God. All right, turn <laughs> it down. All right, here we go. Uh, my record, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> is 59, 41, and 7. We're, you're going against the spread. I'm going to only repeat that five more times. <laughs> 59, 41, and 7. That's no, awesome. seriously. 59, 41, and 7. Now, but... My guys in the Sun Times, and you get the Bear Bar Room picks and the Sun Times picks. They're the same. If you go, you know what? I gotta watch, look at the Sun Times because I don't have time to listen to the uh, podcast. You know, because mm -hmm. I I listen to it once, but I want to listen to it again. I'm busy. Just make sure you have a Sun Times around. That's Absolutely. all you have to do, and you'll see those guys last week won their best bets, mm -hmm. and I lost mine, the top play. So I'm four two and one. They're 5-2, and two, talking about Mark Silverman, my good friend, and Mark Potash, my buddy also. Now, here's the deal, though. They were 5-8-1 and one, as far as Mark Potash. Mm -hmm. He was 5-8-1, and one, and, and Sylvie was 3-10-1. And, oh, and that wow. gives their, my record 59-41-7. and seven. Uh, Sylvie's is 46-54-7, so he's really, seriously, he's had some bad luck, and he's been on top the last couple years. It's just one of those years. I had it last year. Well, you know, so he he's going to he's scrapping back, but uh, he's forty six fifty four and seven, and then uh, Mark is forty five fifty five and seven. Talking about Mark Potash, so I'm one bad week away, and they're one good week, as Aldo will tell you, away from tightening this this thing up, which which we like. It's competitive, and believe me, they stumped me for a long time. I was two one and one on Baru last week, which gives my record at twenty one. 
five and two. So twenty one five and two. Twenty one five and two. That's unbelievable. Yes, I'm ready. I am ready. But I got I am here. Can you hear me? Uh, okay. <laughs> no, I just I, I heard you call for a cap. I, I mean, I, that's, that's all I wanted. No, say. let okay. me tell you, Mike. Let me tell you. I really love that competitive nature of yours, and f- for you to go up against these guys at the sometimes it's fun to follow every week on the Chicago sometimes and I love picking up that Friday newspaper because their Bears coverage is outstanding throughout the week but on Friday they got page after page after page of Bears coverage and then I get down to the picks and read that column from Mark Potash it's fun fun stuff you're like a proud father I am you're like a proud I, father. I am I, I really like bragging about you because uh, <laughs> you're, you're a good guy oh you're the best Aldo <laughs> you know what your name and for people that don't realize it, his name is Aldo Gandia. Okay, <laughs> here we go. Eagles minus three. You know, Aldo's going, just please. You make please. I'm, I'm, I'm ready to just do a, a, a double somersault with the Jesse White tumblers, and that wouldn't be good if Aldo did that. Okay, no. here we go. Eagles minus three versus the Jaguars. Now, you know what? The Jaguars, everybody's talking, panning them and everything else, but the Eagles haven't lit it on fire either, and their coach... Coached a bad football game last week. Now, you'd expect them to go to London and get it done. But here's something. Jaguars have been hearing it. But seriously, when you think of London, don't you think of Jacksonville? Absolutely. They're the team that's been there more than anybody else. Yep. This is a home game. Yep. So I'm going to take the Jaguars. Uh, getting the three, if they lose, they lose within the three. Now, when you say Mike, that sounds crazy. My record's 21-5-2. Shut the hell up. That's all I'm going to tell you. Okay? You know what 21-5-2 is, Aldo? I had BB figure this out for me. I tried. It took me 10 minutes, and then I took it upstairs. 76%. That is awesome. Ladies and gentlemen, the best handicapper in the world, not in Chicago, not in the suburbs, not in the communist black countries, is on Bears Barrow and in the Chicago sometimes. Mm. Period. End of story. Okay, here we go. Number two. Number two. Very good. <laughs> I sound like Ed, um, Ed McMahon. Remember Ed McMahon? <laughs> you just did it. Yes. You just did it. I just Hello. did it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> this is one. Now, by the way, last week, I did not, and when I don't give out the units, it's an automatic hundred, which puts me at 2060 because, uh, the week before, we lost, and then last week, excuse me, I did win at two one and one, so I'm at twenty one fifty now. So the Jaguar game mm-hmm. is one hundred twenty five jelly beans. Okay. Okay. All right. Contain yourself. The Lions <laughs> minus three versus the Seahawks. You know what? I don't know what to make of this. I I really believe the Seahawks should be favored. So is this a trap? Is this a game that's just going to go the way the odds makers want it? Here's what I'm going to tell everybody out there. This is what I do for a living. And th- believe me when I tell you this, I'm going to tell you how much I've made the first seven weeks in a few minutes, so don't touch that dial. <laughs> Talk about your 1964 references. Don't touch that dial. <laughs> I'm going to give the time out in a minute. Um, <laughs> but uh, the li- last week, the sports books took, their- took a beating. They lost. So... They're coming back with a vengeance this week, and it usually doesn't happen two times in a row. I took the Lions, but I only put 50 jelly beads on them because I don't feel strong about this game, but it was one of my top four plays that I liked. So I'm taking the Lions. I don't want it. I can't explain every pick I make. I don't have a logical explanation for the record I have. It's the system I play. And when I play this system, it's like the Fortress of Solitude. Okay, so tell your friends who are all losers who've already had to ask their wives for money to pay the bookmaker off. That means they're indebted to the wife for the next three years and got to do whatever the wife says. And they promise they'll never gamble again, which is a lie because they find another bookmaker and get stupid again. Just listen to the Mike North Advantage. That's all you got to do. That's all right. That's it. I just got the shakes when I started that. Like, I've never had to do that. <laughs> yeah. Jaguars and the Lions. Now, Bengals minus four and a half versus the Buccaneers. Ladies and gentlemen, the Bengals disappointed me. Yeah. Even though I picked the other way. They disappointed me with their play. 
They look like a bad Marvin Lewis year. I had the Bengals doing much, much better, in my opinion, than they are. They're four and three. I am at five and two and better. I had rated their defense like the 85 defense three quarters of the time. Eldo knows that. I'm not seeing the resolve. Mm -hmm. And that's what happens when you play for a coach who's comfortable and who's been somewhere for 17 years. Right. Right. And that's just the way it is. Can you imagine any Bear coach lasting 17 years besides George Hallis and Mike Ditka? I couldn't. Mm -hmm. And I wouldn't want to. Yeah. Even if... Even Ditka would have been gone by now. Yep. The only way Harris lasted, because he owned the damn team. <laughs> How true is that? <laughs> I mean, be honest with you. i got to be honest. I mean, like Jerry Jones. He'll never fire himself from GM. He owns the damn team. <laughs> so, um, I like Tampa Bay. I think Jameis Winston's been, been felt the pressure coming back. Uh, you know, after that fits magic nonsense, remember? Oh, yeah. And, uh... It was a tough thing to come back from. And as I look at the Bucks, I mean, you see that they're at 3-3. Three and three, And I look at the Bengals at 4-3, and three, and I just think Jameis Winston's going to have the, one of those come-to-Jesus games. So I'm going to take um, the Buccaneers in this game. And they've done well for me. Well, who hasn't? <laughs> uh, Jaguars, Lions, Buccaneers. You know how many people want to see me crash and burn in the media? How many? You know how many? How many? A little quicker with the with the with the response, please. Are, are we on seven second delay? For God's sake, many. I'm just going to say many. Many. Okay? Uh, many. I, I figured okay. you were going to give me a number of like ten thousand or so, but uh, many, yeah. many is, will work for us. Oh, many. Jealous, envious. <laughs> you know, uh, hate themselves in their head. Okay, here we go. My big play. The big play. Those production values the at the bar room. <laughs> Second to none. Second to none. <laughs> okay. Rams, I'm glad this week you got, it sounds like you got your uh, normal three hour sleep last night. You were very responsive today. Um, Rams minus nine and a half versus the Packers. I'm just going to tell everybody this. Everybody in America, I don't even, I, I, I didn't even research this game. I didn't. I didn't research it. Eldo's going to go, Mike, please. And I'm going to go, Eldo, yourself and every man in America is going to take the nine and a half in Aaron Rodgers. They're going to take it. Because they still think it's Aaron Rodgers from two years ago or three years ago. Mm -hmm. You don't have Jordy Nelson, who, by the way, let me just throw this to all the great people at Bears (laughs) Barrow that do such a great job. No, I'm going to be straight up. I know you are. I'm going to be straight up. This is the way I am. I I don't forget, bad (laughs) or good. And this is to talk Dr. Phil, Mm -hmm. my dear friend. Shane Marsal. He's done a great job. Mm -hmm. Then we got Shane. Mm -hmm. We got Bear Girl. We got them all. We got them all. You know, we got Nikki. I love them, Nikki. I love them, too. We got (laughs) Gooch. We got the fantasy guys. The goon we got them the all. Yes. I mean, we got Eldo Gandia. Gandia. And then we got the Bear Advantage. John, Johnny Buffon. Johnny! Are you kidding me? Oh, my gosh. Good old number 55. What a lineup. You know? That's a lineup. Did, did I get everybody? Uh, yeah, I think you, well, <laughs> you forgot the Barfly Tailgate show on Sunday that I you appeared on. I the Barfly guy. <laughs> I was on with them. Bobby Bombs. <laughs> Bobby! Come Woo. on, help me out, Eldo. Who else? <laughs> Um, B. Diddy, Air Jair, B. Diddy, my guy, and Air Jair, hey! and the Gaines Report. Man, we got so many guys. We, we got buy. people that not, support us. Not, all right. Not enough so, time, though. All right, here we go. Rams, Buccaneers, Lions, and Jaguars. Uh, here's what I'm putting. I'm putting the Rams for 150, Okay. the Bucks for 100, the Jags for 125, and the Lions for 50. Now, I got... An email the other day. It's Mike, they asked me, Mike, do you play your picks? I go, yeah, I play my picks, but I also make other picks that don't even get on the show or in the papers or anything else. And he says, how many jelly beans are you up? Because I know you're kicking ass in the NFL. Well, right now, in the NFL, if I just did that, I'd be up like 21,500 if I took every game. Wow. Which I don't. Okay. But I also bet NBA, 
I also bet other things. And I also don't bet every pick mm -hmm. that I make in the paper. Mm -hmm. So right now, a reasonable number, you know, mm -hmm. is 16. That's not 16,000. That is not For bad. seven weeks' work. You know what I mean? Yes. That's all. That's all. <laughs> enjoy, enjoy your day at the Dean's Milk Factory, folks. Good night. <laughs> Forget about listening to Bears Bar Room. Enjoy working overnights at convenience. Good luck to you. Go ahead. Good luck. Good luck. I'll be over here watching television and having a ham sandwich. <laughs> nice. I don't know what else I got to say. Are you ready? Are you ready for me to make the other picks? <laughs> Let's go make the other picks. I oh, boy. You're something today. You're really pulling out all the stops. Do you have the music on? <laughs> the music is on. Let's see. Okay. There it is. <laughs> there it is. All right. That's good. All right, here we go. Okay. I'm, I'm worried about this game. Oh, no, I'll leave, I'll leave the Bears game uh, last. Uh, okay? uh, you always say I'm worried about this game when you talk about the Bears. I'm but... worried about my life. <laughs> How do you think I am on Sundays about 4.30? <laughs> oh, I'm, in, inside, I'm, I'm in a glass case of emotion. <laughs> I bet right, you here are. We go. Eagles, I already gave that out with the Jaguars. Redskins, Redskins. minus one at the Giants. Um... I'm hearing a lot of Giants. I'm hearing Barkley, Manning, Beckham. They played a good game last week. They did. They played a decent game. So I think that people don't take the Redskins seriously. The Redskins have struggled a little bit. I'm taking the Redskins in this game. Okay? Okay, got the We Redskins. have the Chiefs minus 10 versus the Broncos. Uh, sooner or later, a team's going to cover uh, I've been riding the Chiefs every game. They're best in the country in the National Football League with the spread. I think they've covered every game. I've been riding them. They're part of my huge success. Eldo, have I, how many times do you, have you heard me say, I'm going against the Chiefs? I haven't. I, I have um, not heard it. I have not. I, I really, I mean, once you, you find that horse. But you know what? I always say don't get up from the poker table. Don't get up from the poker table when you're on the roll. Stay with the team. But sooner or later... You fall asleep with your cards in your hands. Mm. You know? <laughs> and, That's true. So, so uh, I'm, 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 I think the Chiefs play a decent game. I think they win by seven. I'm going to take the Broncos, uh, getting the 10 points. Ravens minus two at the Panthers. Uh, I'm a Cam Newton guy. He, he, everybody's forgetting about, I brought up even how the coach from the Eagles mis, miscoached that game. Well, you know what? One of the reasons was because of Cam Newton. Uh, this guy is a, a bona fide player, one of a kind freak. Uh, I'm, I'm taking the Panthers, getting two um, at home. At home, mm -hmm. uh, that's unbelievable to me. So I think somebody made a mistake there. And before you say, well, maybe you're making a mistake. You want, you want to know? Should I say? Have I told everybody what my record is? <laughs> say it one more time. It sounds so good. Forty-one, five, and two. It's pretty awesome. You know, Seventy-six percent. It's really hard to. Jesus, you know what? I'm one bad week from being like a normal human and getting kicked into you know what. So I gotta be careful. I gotta be humble. Hey, I gotta tell you in the chat room, uh, the goon who is the host of the the fantasy football goon co-host. I love the goon. He's headed to Vegas next week, and he wants to know if if he can pack you in his suitcase. <laughs> no, but he has to listen to Bear Bowler. That's all he has to do. That's right. It's that Friday next Friday. Exactly. Now it, you know. I mean, that's just basically the way it is. Mm -hmm. Okay. The Goon's a good man. A Steelers good man. minus eight versus Browns. I'm sorry. It's still a rivalry. I, I like Mayfield still. Uh, he's hits not the, I would say, start compared to the other quarterbacks, I thought. Uh, he's still on the Cleveland Browns. Don't forget that. I like him to keep it within a touchdown. Um, Colts minus three at the Raiders. Colts been getting it done. I'm going Raiders, though. I think people, when, just when you sour on the Raiders, you get off, guess what happens? They get it done. What's the spread Gruden, on that one? Cleaning the house. And by the way, I, Gruden kicked ass in that trade. Amari Cooper, I can name you 25 receivers I'd rather have in the National Football League. Yeah. I mean, what has he done? I understand he's had some numbers, but he's, got, he, he's always one of the leaders in drops. And to get to get the guys to get picks like that, I'm sorry. Good luck to Dallas. Yeah. Enjoy Amari Cooper. Um, I don't know about that one. But. Here's our nemesis. 
Okay. 49ers minus one at the Cardinals. I, I'm going to keep taking them, and they're going to keep – you thank God I have a winning record. Yeah. I'm going to keep taking the 49ers. Why do you do that? Remember our conversation? They got nine and a half playoffs. Remember our conversation? Yes. Uh, I'm going to take the 49ers because if I don't take the 49ers, then guess what? They'll, they'll, they're going to win. I'm such a public – screwball with this team. <laughs> I am. Are, I think true. they got Brody. I think they got Montana. <laughs> I think they got McElhenney. Bill Walsh. I think they got Cedric Hardman. Don't make me go. Uh, uh, I think they got Steve Young. Ronnie I think Lott. they got Bill Walsh. I think they got Roger Craig, though. <laughs> they have none of those. Man. And yet, hey, Mike, there's a trough. It's the 49er trough. <laughs> Drink it, and then you'll just, boom, collapse. I'm going 49ers. I don't know why minus you do that. <laughs> At Arizona, okay. my nemesis. Vikings minus one versus the Saints. Mm-hmm. Vikings. Um, wow, is that at New Orleans? Uh, no, it's at Minnesota. Okay. Yeah, but you still went, wow, like you were shocked. <laughs> well, yeah, you know, I'm an anti-Vikings. Because if, you're not, if I'm not mistaken, you know what you said? Wow. To last week, the Lions, and they it's covered. It's true, it's true. So you just said, wow. So let me just assure that should be everybody your sure bet. that one game I'm sh- I could go one in, I could go one in, done. Only win one game. <laughs> Except for one thing. Eldo went, whoa. You know, when Eldo, when Eldo Gandia goes, whoa, jump. Okay? So Vikings minus one. Then here's another one. Eldo, I know you want to say wow. <laughs> Patriots minus 14 versus the Bills. Yeah. I'll take the Bills plus the 14. Really? Go ahead. Say it. Wow. <laughs> oh, I mean, wow. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yeah, so you know what? I'm taking the Bills. So let me read everything off for everybody in the class. And I want you to write it down. I've written them down, but I, I, I missed one. So go over them, please. Okay. You know which one you missed? Uh, no, because I the missed Bears. it. Bears! <laughs> oh, that's right. There you go. Bears, Barroom, Armeldo Gantia, the president <laughs> of the website. That's we forgot good. the Bears. <laughs> Draft Dr. Phil is jealous. No, we didn't forget the Bears. You forgot the Bears. But <laughs> right. I'm here to save you again. Thank here you. we go. You got the driveway down? Did you bet the picks last week? Um, uh, no, you didn't. <laughs> you can't write them. I can't. I, I can't. There, there, there was not a snap answer. Yes. So <laughs> I already. I know. This week. I'm hurt. This week. I love your picks. This week. I'm betting them. This week. Tom Bowman and I you, are if betting I had a pick them. I could take back. I take back the Bears pick. But I already took them. Okay. Tell me what you got. Here. I just think that you know what the Jets will keep it close. I think Sam Darnold has a decent day. I think what we're seeing with the defense is. Uh, a mirage from the first couple of weeks, but I also know what they can do to inexperienced quarterbacks, and I also know that Nagy needs a stronger game. I think Mitch Trubisky's coming along, and I think they're going to run the football. I didn't say the Bears were going to lose this game. If the Bears, the Bears are minus seven and a half. Am I a bad guy if I think the Jets are going to lose by seven? No, of course right? not. No, you're right? still a fan. You're still you're. Hey, first and foremost, Mike North, you are a handicapper. That's your job. Right. So, if I had to do over again, maybe I would do it differently. Did my heart come into play here? Maybe, but do I see Sam Darnold on the other end? And I think Trubisky wants to keep this party going mm-hmm. uh, to show people that he's a viable quarterback in the National Football League. I do know this, Eldo, and I'm taking the Bears. But I would go light, folks, if you want to take them. Mm, okay. Minus the seven and a half. And it will probably be down to seven mm-hmm. uh, by the time, you know, the bet's there. Uh, my one loss last, I mean, my one tie was Cleveland. But in the Sun-Times, I take the Sun-Times pick, I was getting three. When I called the guy, I was getting three and a half. Mm-hmm. So I won that game, literally, but I just counted as a tie. I think that it will be seven. I think it's very possible, a parlay card killer, where ties lose. Bears minus seven. Jets plus six, you could lose just by landing on the number, and that ruins your whole parlay card. So I think the Bears will win, but uh, I'm, I'm saying this is a game you got to be a little bit careful of. Also, I had the Texans last night. You could check in the Sun-Times. I'm yes. on a roll yes. uh, on Thursdays. If you remember, Aldo, I was 0-4 on Thursdays. Right. And then I tied one. Now I've won three in a row, 3-4-1. and one. So on fire, I had the Texans last night. 
that was an easy football game. Yeah, that was an easy one. And uh, But nonetheless, I'm very impressed how you've turned around your Thursday games. And I'm also impressed with your analysis of the Chicago Bears game. It's like people in the chat room are saying, Bob Phelan says that Mike is a fan of money. You, you will always bet with your brains and, and your right. guts, but, but rarely. Well, I'm not going to bet the Bears this week. If I did bet, bet the game, I, get you. I would bet the Jets. But I'm I, not going to do it. I already put it down as a bear pick. I only bet two or three games. I'm up a ton of jelly beans. I will tell you this, too, and if I could address, people have been taking heed about criticizing Trubisky. Mm -hmm. Let me tell everybody this. I think Mitch Trubisky's done well. Mm -hmm. But the Bears would have won that game if he didn't throw 24 incompletions last week. Yeah. He, think about this. He had some accuracy You have issues. quarterbacks like, like Deshaun Watson going 16 to 20, Matty Ice going 21 of 27. Uh... You got quarterbacks who hardly throw. I mean, Brady last week threw eleven incompletions. When you throw twenty-four incompletions in a game, okay, mm -hmm. that means there was at least six of those passes that could have been completed. That one tackler doesn't bring the guy down, and they get a big game. Right. Maybe there's a couple touchdowns there because he overthrew people, underthrew people, and accuracy right now is his biggest problem. Period. End of story. You can say whatever you want. He's done a good quarterback rating. Stats are deceiving. When you throw, what was he, 24 of 50 or something? Yeah. 25 of 50? Can you check that for me? Although I think he was. I can. Yes. Um, that's basically what we're talking about here. you got to complete more passes, period. I, I agree. And now Matt Nagy says that some of the players uh, were, ran imprecise routes, but nonetheless, there were still yes. too many inaccurate throws from my taste, and I, and I think... You know what he has a problem with? The flag pattern. In other words, not the flag pattern going into the end zone. I'm talking about, and I'm sure Dr. Phil, I've seen this broken down sometimes, uh, when Dr. Phil does it, on, on his show mm -hmm. um, with Paige that the, you do like a little flag pattern uh, or, you know, uh, towards the post, I mean, towards the uh, end zone, the corner of the end zone, even on the 40-yard line, you run a 15-yarder, you got your guy beaten, Trubisky overthrows it. Mm -hmm. right. Those are balls that got to be completed. Last week, there was a tight end, and by the way, they're playing pretty good as receivers. There was a tight end, I think it was Burton or whoever, who did like an eight uh, an eight yard out, wide open. Yep. And he just missed it. Yep. So that's what he's got to get better at. He uh, he was twenty six of fifty against the Patriots. Two touchdowns, two you interceptions. Twenty four. Did anybody bring that up? I mean, I hear people taking heat because they're saying Trubisky's got to get better. You, you can't throw 24 uh, incompletions and win a football game against Tom Brady. That's you can't. That I don't give a damn sure. how you dissect the game. That's I've been, I've been uh, betting this game and handicapping it and seeing things for a long time. You ask anybody, if you threw 24 incompletions against New England, are you winning? No way! I mean, you wouldn't even beat the uh, Steve Grogan Patriots. <laughs> Remember those yeah. guys? <laughs> well, you know what? That's another story because the Steve Grogan Patriots uh, would, if, if you had the 85 Bear defense, they wouldn't even show up. If You know, they almost <laughs> didn't show up for the Super Bowl, Tony Eason and those guys. I know. Oh, my gosh. What a beating poor Tony Eason took. Oh, my God. It was the best. <laughs> I loved it. They beat the girl. By the way, some movie news real quick, okay? Yes, yes. I was going to ask you about the movie news because I saw on Twitter that you, uh, you, you met with a few people yesterday. Please share. I met with Jesse Rogers. We met uh, over at a restaurant uh, on the north side uh, with Jeremy Morrison. Movie's coming along uh, very, very well. Next week, I'm going to reveal the, the actor we got pinned down. It's no longer Edward Norton, mm -hmm. but we have a very popular actor nice. uh, that I think will uh, raise some eyebrows. So we're very uh, happy about that um, because, it, it, and you know what, I just saw for let me get. Did you see Dinner with Hervé? Uh, no, but I, I have it on my list of things to watch. It looks really watch good. Watch it. It's about Tattoo, the guy that played Tattoo. Right, on Fantasy what, Island. The, what, his last night on Earth with this writer. Oh. It's unbelievable uh, that, that uh, the, the uh, what do you say? The short guy? Yeah, huh? from Game of Thrones. Uh, yeah, the real short you guy? You say little you know person. Real short little person. <laughs> is what I you mean. know, the real, real short guy. <laughs> you know, the guy come up to my waist, right? <laughs> yeah. He's a great actor. 
Excellent. Patrick Dinklage, I think his name is fantastic. Check it out, folks. Mm-hmm. He plays Herve Velichez unbelievably well. <laughs> unbelievably well. I love autobiographies. Me, me I've too. seen it three times already. Wow, so cool. It's a wonderful movie. Cool. We cover everything here. We cover movies. You know what I mean? Well, the guys over we at... Don't touch poli- we don't touch politics. We don't. I don't want to disappoint Aldo. <laughs> I don't want to disappoint him. People want us to talk politics, though, on a future show, no. but we'll, we'll do that after the season, we maybe. We talk politics for one minute. We're, I, I, you know, the other day I felt like Maury in Goodfellas with the, with the fall cord around my neck and my wig falling off. That's right. My God. I started to raise my voice. Scene, wasn't it? <laughs> yes, that was an excellent scene. Yeah, the yeah. guys over at Box Office Bros want to have you and I on to talk movies with them one day, so we'll, we'll, we'll plan that out. In a, you know what? I've been waiting by the phone. <laughs> Anytime they want to talk. Well, I know. People act like I'm a retired, I'm a retired gentleman. <laughs> I'm the guy that's on the front porch rocking back and forth. <laughs> yeah, that's right. All. Counting your money, right? <laughs> yeah, well, I do the best I can, Elder. You know me. I'm yeah. a man that could have built you a driveway. You've ignored my pick. <laughs> that's true. Thinking I'm going to fall my face. I know how this goes. <laughs> I know so how this true. movie plays out, speaking of movies. And Jesse Rogers, by the way, fantastic. He met with us and he told us some great stories. The guy just stares at us. The guy just stares at us and writes. He looks at us like, holy Christ. Uh-huh. You, you did what? Yeah. So, it's going to be a good movie. And it took two years for the, even the screenwriting for the dinner with uh, Hervé. Mm-hmm. So I'm doing this research, you yes, know what I mean? Yes. And we're, we're at a good clip because I'm co-writing this thing. Well, my gosh. I mean, uh, the Howard Stern movie, Private Parts, that thing took like six years to write because Howard was so they, they, they actually uh, people in the production team started calling him Coward Stern because he, he, he didn't want certain things out he wanted he, and people thought maybe he's just afraid to have his movie told uh, in life which is why it was delayed so long now I'm not saying it's going to take you a six story, years and I respect Howard Stern okay there's mm-hmm. no question oh this is going to be good I mean, listen you know, up guys I think it- <laughs> What's that? I'm telling our listeners to listen up because when you got Howard Stern stories, they're really, really interesting. <laughs> well, they are. But you know what? He changed a little bit because he went a little mainstream, and I understand that. Mm-hmm. I, he's a legend to me. Yes. Um, but when I tell you this, what happened with the private parts, he told a lot, told a lot of stories about in-house fighting. Mm-hmm. You know, with the he programmed, and you know what? Every guy's had that that, that was great at, at, his, at his radio job. Everybody, for the most part, has had their issues with management. My story off the air is going to be a little bit different. And you're right. You've got to be willing to tell some things you don't want to tell. Right. Uh, and you've got to tell it, but you know what? There's ways to do it. Mm-hmm. Um, but, but it will make what he, I remember, wasn't his mostly inside stuff? Yeah, from the movie I saw it one time. Yeah, I, I, I saw I saw it two or three times. It was mostly his his tribulations at, with, with the radio, but also some yeah. some of his relationship with his wife. Half. Yeah, because you, you, your story with BB is it could be a whole movie just by itself. Right. Well, with BB and then uh, the other things and the, the the problems I had off the year, right. the, uh, the 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 days that I mean, you know, we had we had Hug a Jew Day. We had Hug a Black Day. <laughs> Jesse Jackson came after us. Right. You know, I mean, so these are things that are going to be told. Mm-hmm. And people are going, what, what kind of days were those? <laughs> those were days I suggested because I thought uh, the African-American, our listeners, or black listeners at that, uh, at that time were being ignored. Mm-hmm. So I had Hug a Black Day. Right. And, and down a- Belmont Avenue. That was a long line, right? A long line. Mostly black men. I mm-hmm. would have preferred a mixture, if you know what I mean. Uh-huh. But there were women, and they felt wanted mm-hmm. because we didn't do a lot of business with them. Mm-hmm. And we, they, were part, they, were, they, they were half the And then people came after me for patronizing. So that there's going to be a lot of great stuff in the movie. Yeah, very, very controversial stuff. <laughs> I can't wait. To, I can't wait till we interview Jesse Jackson. That ought to be a real treat. Oh my gosh! You, so you guys oh, no, are. I gonna... love Jesse. Jesse's a great guy. Oh yeah, he'll, I, he'll have a good time if he know. He'll try to play himself. Oh, he'd love to play himself. Are you uh, kidding I'll me? Get, you know what? I'll get the bigger wig. <laughs> Jesse, when, Jesse, Jesse Jackson. I told him this. I go, you know what? I don't agree with everything just that you said. And we worked on the Ernie Banks statue together. Mm-hmm. But I said, you had one of the best Afros of all time. 
Mm. And you know what he says to me? What do you say? Well, thank you, Mark. <laughs> Just like that. <laughs> hey, Inspirational. Who's going to play Dan Jiggets, your uh, co-partner on the Monsters of the Midday? That would, that's going to be an interesting casting choice. Yeah, it's going to be an interesting casting choice, and we've got a couple guys that we've discussed. Um, right now, the core of the movie is Dan Lee, the owner. Yeah, fascinating, um, fascinating. Lynn Bramer mm-hmm. and... Uh, Yours truly, mm-hmm. uh, BB, mm-hmm. uh, Jiggett, Jesse, mm-hmm. and uh, Jeff Schwartz so far. And then the other people in certain scenes. You know what I'm saying? Right, right. You know? So it's just stuff like that. I mean, and the first, the plan is to do like, they did a narrative for the first, you know, for your childhood. Mm-hmm. Show a short scene arguing with this. I'm not, look, I'm not giving anything else out. I've had enough. You're digging too much. That's, that's why you're a great writer. You know well, what I mean? I, I, I've, got, you know what? I've got another question on another topic, but before right. but before we leave this topic. I want to stay all day with you. I want to stay too. This one hour show stuff isn't going to work. We right? could go if we, I, I don't mind going longer. I want you to know that. Bowling's been called off for today, so I could stay. <laughs> <laughs> but we're gonna bowling and no nap, Mike. <laughs> That's bowling and no nap. You better as well put a gun in my mouth. <laughs> I, I got an idea for the closing scene after the credits of your movie, and that scene involves you and me, and I'm going to share it with you at a later time because I want to perfect it and then just pitch it to you and your movie team because it could, it, it will have everybody just sitting there waiting for the credits to end to watch this scene with you and me. This is going to be outstanding. Now, so you're, in, you're putting yourself in the movie. Exactly. <laughs> what are you crazy? There's no doubt you're not selfish. <laughs> Exactly. I will I tell you this. In the movie. You're, you're no different than anybody else, including me, I've ever known. I love you. You're gonna. We're gonna figure out some way to get you in. If I'm looking for, if I'm looking for a gang leader, yeah, that's that me. Was hanging around Foreman High School, you'll be the teacher they're abusing. <laughs> that's awesome. Because the XRT was across, and the score was across from Foreman High School. Nice kids, real nice kids. Just run. <laughs> Absolutely. Run fast. Yeah. <laughs> Don't run. I love them. There's nothing better. I'm a CPS kid. That's, That's it, baby. Chicago Public CPS Schools, baby. CPS kids are the best. That's Chicago right. Public School. All right. And we, before we go, we got to talk a little bit about the World Series because the Los Angeles Dodgers, Shane Marsaw's favorite team in baseball, they're down two to nothing. The series is now going to Los Angeles for games three, four, and if necessary, game five. What are you making of this series? Why have the Red Sox gotten off to a 2-0 lead? And do you think the Dodgers are still in this thing? When you sit your top four home run hitters, you deserve to lose. If you're going to play the little statistical game, then we don't need you as a manager. Now, it's okay to play that game if you're Roberts. If it's like you're playing, uh, who could I say, St. Louis in May. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Or San Diego in July. You're playing the Boston Red Sox, dude. Mm-hmm. You're playing an American League team. There's no way in hell when you're playing at Fenway Park that you should sit your top hitters. Mm-hmm. None. No way at all. So when I hear this nonsense about computers and how he's managed all year, there's a different type of managing that has to be done. And this is what almost... You know, this is what people can criticize Joe Madden all they want, you know? And he almost blew it for the Cubs in in 2016. But I will tell you this, I will never criticize him again after watching this guy manage because you got to know where you're at. Now, that game may be okay, going and playing in a big ballpark like L.A. But at Fenway Park, to have your top sluggers sit, you should have your head examined. Period. End of story. I think Boston now wins four games to one, maybe four games to none. Uh, so, do you have Jenny? There's nothing you could say after that. I broke it down so good. You thought you were talking. You thought you were. Well, you are talking to somebody that knows baseball. But <laughs> I'm just saying, it's insanity. It is. It's insanity to, to have a 315 foot wall mm-hmm. and to, and to sit your guys. I don't care if they be at righty. I don't care if they be at lefty. You put your sluggers up in an American League park because here, I'll give everybody a perfect example. If Clayton Kershaw pitched in the American League, mm-hmm. he would he wouldn't he'd get torched just like a lot of guys do, and you see that when he pitches, he's a National League pitcher, 
So I'm telling everybody that David Price straightened himself out now. They and you got Chris Sale. Thanks, White Sox. And we wanted I wanted them to get Ben Attendee. They went for, they went for him. Boston said no, Aldo. Mm-hmm. So they didn't take Sale off the table like any good businessman would, even though they knew Boston that Sale would help them get there. And they they instead settled for Mancada. I mean, it's just unbelievable. And a couple other guys. Sorry. Great analysis, Mike. And before we leave, I got to tell you, I'm that John Santucci. One of the co-hosts of the Box Office Bros suggests Wendell Pierce for Dan Jiggets, and Wendell Pierce, I think, would be great. He was one of the cops in the acclaimed HBO series The Wire. This guy is a fabulous actor. I think he could pull off. If he big boned. He's he's uh, he's not tall, but yeah, he is big boned. He's a heavy guy. He's got to look like he's a he's got a tower over the guy that we're, who's about six feet. He he can he can do it with a little camera trickery because I don't think he's that tall. But camera little... trickery. Let me tell you something, buddy. <laughs> this ain't ET, okay? Camera trickery. This ain't an alien coming out of a spaceship. All right, we don't have the name for the story, but it's going to be accurate. It's not going to be like American Made, where the actual guy does not look like Tom Cruise. The actual guy was a 320-pound slob. I know. Period. Isn't that true? Yeah, but who's going to go see a movie about a, a, a drug runner who's a 300-pound slob? Baby? Hollywood wants that good-looking Tom Cruise guy to play that role. I understand that, but I know the real story. And I love Tom Cruise in it. But here's what I'm going to tell you. I'm going to get – if somebody plays Dan – Mm-hmm. It's going to be a guy that looked like he played football. Like that dude. I never even saw the movie. The Blind Side? That oh, guy? yeah. Yeah. That's... Okay, what's his name? Orr? Uh, yeah, well, the, the uh, real-life character is, is Michael Orr. Yeah, that, yeah that's happening. Guy that played him. Yeah. But Jigs wants Denzel. I mean, you know what? It ain't going to work for Jigs. <laughs> no, it ain't going to He happen. wants Denzel. I'm telling you, forever. <laughs> I, I mean, I, he, he, that's his guy. I go, it's not happening. Yeah, I don't think Unless we want to take it. To, but yeah, but that's how selfless Dan Jenkins is. <laughs> There's no movie without Dan. And uh, as far as my career. Oh. And, and, and yeah, he's so selfless. He's I'm willing to give up. Tremendous guy. The man's physique. Mm-hmm. My physique. So the greatest, maybe the greatest black actor and one of the top five actors of all time mm-hmm. plays me. How unselfish is he? Very. <laughs> 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 I love Jake. We're going to interview him and Lynn Bramer coming up Ooh, from boy. WXRT. Like so we're, we're knocking them off. We got to do the interviews. And uh, they come in from Detroit and Adam Rifkin's people are keeping a prize. I'm going out there in a couple weeks now and to California. I'm going to be like, uh, what's his name? Travolta. <laughs> you know, and get shorty. I love movies. Oh, you know. I know you do. I know you do. And it's so exciting that there's a movie being developed on your life story. This is yeah. just one of the great Chicago stories of the past few few years. And we'll uh, see. We want to make it in Chicago. Yeah, absolutely. And, and, well, you know, you know, but we got to make sure the taxes because exactly. Adam Ripkin's never done a film in Chicago. Yeah, it's And it's he's tricky. wanted to. It's and, tricky. Uh, but, you know, I, I've had some... There's people that would help me in this town and people would, that would hinder me, so I don't know what's going to happen. Well, um, uh, Jesse Jackson will help, that's for sure. Oh, Jesse's the best. <laughs> Give him a co-producer spot. Forget about it. I'll be able to go anywhere. There you go. All right, Mike, final words. Love you, brother. <laughs> Tell people, tell people again your four picks before you you go. Just to wrap yeah, things up. Take here. your time. Take your time. Okay. I, I know you. You're all excited. You probably got a muffin <laughs> cooking in the, in the oven. I do. Um, I know you do. You're starving. I want to. Okay. I want to go over your four picks and then we'll say goodbye. Well, you've had enough. Um, for Dolly at Law Group first. Mm-hmm. Thank you very much. Bet Chicago. Thank you very much. And that great. Ticks. Blitz. Ticks, right? Ticks blitz. Ticket com. service? Yes, indeed. Okay. My top picks, Jaguars, Lions, Buccaneers, and the top play is the Rams. Thank you, Aldo. Thank you, Mike. We'll talk to you soon. Overtime. I love it. See you later, my friend. <laughs>